Welcome back, my fellow brew bros and brew sisters. This is Magus the Brew number seven, the podcast grover can tribe, Commodex and Commander. Crack them in cold ones at the same time. Today's commander is one of the newest uh, Elder Dragons, Arcades the Strategist. And today we're drinking the New Holland Brewing Dragon's Milk. <laughs> Let me start this uh, video today with I hope everybody had a good uh, 4th of July, um, America's birthday. And if you are non-American or un-American, I hope you had a good Wednesday. Um, so there's that. Um, so today's newest commander, as Core um, Set 2019 just came out, or, well, the spoilers happened. The set's not out yet. Um, we got a lot of the new uh, the new commanders available in the set are like the original Elder Dragons, like revamped and reworked or whatever. And you know it's kind of cool. It's a good homage to the original EDH. I mean, before um, Commander was Commander, it was EDH Elder Dragon Highlander, and uniquely that's why the Commander damage um, points are set at twenty one because each of the original Elder Dragons were seven seven, so that'd be three hits from an Elder Dragon. Um, obviously, back then Nickel Bolus was the best one, but. You might still be now, but we'll see. Um, so I decided to work with uh, Arcades the Strategist, which was unfortunately the last one to get spoiled. But, um, you know, it's, it's a unique opportunity, and uh, it's kind of a different commander. And a lot of people are happy for it for different reasons, um, so I will go into that. Um, Arcades the Strategist is a one in Bant, so one, a green, a white, and a blue. Um, legendary creature, Elder Dragon, 3-5, Flying Vigilance. And I'm going to read the second uh, spot of text. Uh, first, um, each creature you control with defender assigns common damage equal to its toughness rather than its power and can't attack as though it didn't have defender. Um, this is what uh, the avenue a lot of people are using the, the Arcades for. Um, it's kind of like a defender tribal style deck. Um, a lot of people have been making um, comparisons to the Arcades as kind of like also Assault Formation or Door in the Siege Tower or whatever. Um, maybe those combined or whatever. And I think that's cool, but there's already like a million videos on YouTube about that. So, and this is Magus the Brew, and we make combo decks. So that's what we did. Um, so the other line of text is, whenever a creature defender enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. Now, this is a draw engine, and a lot of people are using this very humbly and just drawing single cards, or in the case of Wall of Omens, and maybe they'll draw two and they feel classy. But anytime you see something that says draw a card, you might as well just replace it with draw your deck. And that's functionally how this deck works. So this deck um, has three kind of avenues to work with. Uh, we play Aluren, Paradox Engine, and Omniscience. Now Aluren is an old uh, Tempest enchantment. Um, costs two green and two. And it's any player, so it's kind of like a global enchantment. It only doesn't only affect you, but any player may um, cast uh, creatures with converted mana cost three or less as though they had flash and without paying their mana cost so it makes everything that costs less than three free and then we play uh, paradox engine paradox engine um, costs five it's a legendary artifact and whenever you cast a spell untap all non-land permanents you control then we play omniscience which just costs a lot of mana and makes everything free uh, we also cheat that out with the academy rector because we can um, so this deck, um, once you've uh, found one of these three pieces, um, and there's lots of tutors and things of whatnot to find them, uh, this deck works by using two creatures that bounce each other to um, draw your deck, basically. So the first part of the combo, the necessary creature, is Jeskai Barricade, um, Khan's Block, Uncommon, All-Star. Just kidding. Uh, it's a white and a one, it's a zero four, it has flash, which is irrelevant, uh, it has defender, so that's obviously a key piece of text there, it allows us to draw a card, and whenever Jeskai Barricade enters the battlefield, you may return another target creature you control to its owner's hand. Um, so obviously when it comes into play, it bounces something else you control. Now using that ability in conjunction with other creatures to do the same thing, because Jeskai Barricade is the only defender with this ability. Unfortunately, Jeskai Bar Barricade can't bounce itself, it's not like a dream stalker, but... Um, that would have been cooler. But we'll play Arctic Merfolk, Deputy of Acquittals, Dreamstalker, as previously mentioned, Shrieking Drake, and White Mane Lion. Um, all these creatures cost, they only cost like two, one or two. And we'll take uh, Shrieking Drake, for example. Shrieking Drake costs one blue as a 1-1, one, one, it flies, and when Shrieking Drake enters the battlefield, return a creature you control to its owner's hand. So what you're doing here, effectively, is you're playing Jeskai Barricade, 
whether Katie's out drawing a card, and then you have to bounce something else, probably a mana dork or something. And then um, then you play any of these other creatures, you play Shrieking Drake. Shrieking Drake, Shrieking Drake makes you return Jeskai Barricade back to your hand. Then you replay Jeskai Barricade to draw a card, returning Shrieking Drake back to your hand. And it's a cast, bounce, cast, bounce um, type of scenario. A learn makes both these creatures just free. Uh, um, Paradox Engine, as long as you're tapping for at least two mana, you can draw your deck this way. If you're tapping for three or more, you're um, generating infinite mana, actually, uh, provided you can stop drawing cards. Uh, and then Omniscience, obviously, is just free. and makes it easy, too. Um, and because Jeskai Barricade is so important in the deck, it's like uh, literally like the main uh, part of this deck. The combo does not work without Jeskai Barricade. Uh, being that's the only defender with this ability, we play Rift Sweeper in case it gets exiled. Uh, a few ways to get um, Jeskai Barricade back if we have to need it. Now, what to do if you have drawn your entire deck? Um, is usually fairly obvious. Uh, we have Laboratory Maniac in the deck. Laboratory Maniac is just the alt win con, CEDH's favorite alt win con. Um, a blue and two, Human Wizard, two two. If you would draw a card while their, your library has no cards in it, you win the game instead. Because normally you just get decked out and lose. So, with Laboratory Maniac, Laboratory Maniac is actually kind of interesting in this deck on account of if you, have a, if you went through the combo with a Lurin, you can actually just flash in um, Laboratory Maniac, which I guess is kind of sweet. Um, and then if somebody tries to kill it, you could actually just keep responding with bounce, uh, with defenders, <laughs> since they all have flash, and win that way. Um, and then beyond that, if somebody somehow does stop, uh, our Laboratory Maniac win condition, we do play Nexus of Fate, because it's the coordinate set 19, uh, new combo piece, or, uh, well, a new combo piece, and also a little promotional card. And, you know, like I said, it's new, so it's always fun to try to play the new cards. Um, Nexus of Fate just costs a 5 and 2 blue. It's an instant. Uh, take an extra turn and then shuffle it back in. It kind of works like Beacon of Tomorrows. Um, and this allows you to, after you've drawn your deck, you can just cast that, shuffle it back. You're now the only card left in your deck, play it again, cast it, shuffle it back. Take infinite turns this way as long as you have 7 mana, which is not particularly that hard to attain in EDH. Um, now, one of the other options in the deck, outside of just kind of winning that way, um, this doesn't win you the game, but it's cruel and fun if you want to do this. Um, with Paradox Engine, you can generate infinite mana relatively easily. Like I said, provided you're tapping for just three mana, which, I mean, could literally just be like a Birds of Paradise and an Axe Bane Guardian or something. Or Noble Hierarch, or any of the mana darks we play, and mana rocks. Um, we play pretty much all the ones we can to try to make the clock speedier. Um, you obviously, when you're generating all the mana um, each time, and then you have to get rid of Arcades at some point so you don't deck yourself out. Um, you can just generate infinite mana this way, and then you can just capsize um, the entire table. Uh, capsize just costs two blue and one instant um, return target permanent to its owner's hand, but it has buyback, so you can pay three more and you get to keep it in your hand. But if you're in the situation of having infinite mana already, I know this spell costs six, but with infinite mana, six is nothing. So, uh, irrelevant cost. So that allows you to just bounce everything that they control, which, you know, if that's something you want to do, go ahead. Um, so this deck, you know, is kind of, it's an interesting one to build. It was the, like I said, it was the last one to get spoiled and I was getting a little bit nervous. The other ones are doable, but um, serviceable for combo. Uh, but this one is like almost obviously the stable combo commander of the newest uh, course at 2019 and I mean it's in good colors I mean it's, it's in bant so you get to dust off your noble hierarchs because you usually don't put those in commander decks because you usually can't uh, or I usually can't um, and I mean you get to play all the creature tutors uh, a lot of different tutors to find any kind of piece we need and you get to play counter spells too um, which you know when you're playing combo you typically like to have some amount of counter spell it's just kind of you know Nice to have. You don't have to play them all, but you'd like to play some just to make your deck a little more, um, a little more threatening instead of just more of the glass cannon type approach. And you can stop your opponents from winning too, which is counters are always nice. Um, so that's functionally the deck. Um, pretty fun, a little tricky, a um, little uh, kind of a few moving parts, but yeah, it's ultimately pretty interesting. So um, you all have a good day, and remember to keep your combos classy.